Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us on this Daily Connection. It's a time when we want to get together in the Word so that the Word gets into us. One of the benefits of reading the Bible chronologically is you get to see the background. A lot of times when we, we look at a psalm, for instance, and we see a little subtitle, this is a song that David wrote or a mesquil that David wrote or some sort of a description of the type of psalm it is, when this happened. Uh, or, you know, another writer, Solomon, wrote a psalm. You have Moses writing a psalm. Reading the Bible chronologically kind of lets you know the historical context of what was going on that prompted that particular psalm to be written. And that's the case today we're going to see is that because we've been reading chronologically through Samuel and Second Samuel and Chronicles, we know what's happened in David's life. So when we get to Second Samuel chapter 22, David launches into a psalm that's so significant that it's not only featured here, it's also featured in Psalm 18. So I want us to look today at, Psalm, at 2 Samuel 22. I want to look specifically at verses 1 through 6. Let's talk a little bit about that and then go a little bit further. David spoke the words of this song to the Lord on the day the Lord rescued him from the grasp of all his enemies and from the grasp of Saul. He said, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock where I seek refuge. My shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, my refuge, and my Savior, you save me from violence. I called to the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and I was saved from my enemies. For the waves of death engulfed me, the torrents of destruction terrified me, the ropes of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. All right, so kind of jump down to five and six real quick. You'll know, see those descriptions, death engulfed, destruction terrified, ropes of Sheol entangled, snares of death confronted, all that. We know that these aren't just superlative terms. You know, He's not just trying to put extreme descriptions out there, but these are realities. They, these at one point in David's life were realities, whether it was when Saul was trying to pursue him in order to preserve his kingdom, taking David out, or whether it was one of the other rogue nations that might have been pursuing David, like the Philistines at times, or it was even his own son, we know that David's life on many different occasions had been in danger, serious danger, threat of death. And that's what he's talking about there. And despite all that, he says, the Lord has shown himself to be faithful. And that's what I think about, trustworthy, unchanging, immovable. That's the words that come to my mind when we see David talking about the Lord is a rock, the Lord is a fortress, the Lord is a shield, a horn of salvation. All these things speak of God's strength, God's faithfulness, that he can be trusted. That's what David had learned through a long and often difficult life, knowing that God had preserved him, knowing that God had protected him. In some cases, God had punished him. Discipline would probably be a better word. But even in that, it was God's intended purpose for David's life to purge him of the unrighteousness, purify him to righteousness. And God was faithful in that as well. So that David could say, despite all the adversity I've faced, despite all the difficulties and hardships I've endured, God, you've been faithful. And we know that because of the life that David, because we've been reading about David's life. Look at verse 7. I called to the Lord in my distress. I called to my God from his temple. He heard my voice and my cry for help reached his ears. So here he's saying, I called out to the Lord. And of course, they viewed the temple as the place where God rested among men. God's presence resided among men. And so it would make sense that he would say, from his temple hear my voice. And then, of course, he goes on to describe how God acted. God had always been faithful to hear David's cry for help. And God would then answer that cry, bringing about his desired outcome for David's life and for his people, Israel. Now, what's the lesson for us in all this? Well, simple. We can trust God. God was not only faithful to David. You know, think about Moses before that, Abraham before that, Joshua all the different historical figures that we can cite that did, where God demonstrated himself to be faithful, especially in their seasons of righteousness, when they were seeking the Lord, when they were uh, trying to honor his word and obedience, God was faithful. And even in those seasons when they were disobedient, when there was a, you know, something that came into their life, an action or an attitude, God was still faithful to discipline them in that season in order to purge them of that unrighteousness and to purify them to righteousness. And on and on and on we can go. And God is faithful. And God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. And so the same assurance that David had, the same trust that God, David put in the Father, the, the, the same comfort he would draw from that, even in times of difficulty, verses six, 4, 5, and 6, even then, 
that same comfort can come to us. That same assurance comes to us. In fact, think about this. We have the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Spirit testifies with our spirit that we're children of God. The Bible says that the Spirit is there to discipline us for righteousness. The Bible says the Spirit is there to produce the righteous character of Christ, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control that we need in order to portray the very image of Christ. The Spirit is there to equip us with gifts and talents and abilities. We have the assurance of the Father's presence by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. So therefore, when we cry out, we're not crying out for some distant action from a distant God. We're crying out for very intimate action from a very intimate presence of God in our life. And just as David drew assurance from that, we can also. So I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know what you're going through. And I don't know if it's a lengthy season or if it's a moment uh, in, in, in a, a, you know, a certain limited time in your life. I, I don't know, but you do. And you can rest assured that the same God who was faithful to deliver David and the same God who was faithful to protect and shield David, give him the assurance of salvation, is the same God who will deliver you, the same God who will provide you his protection and assurance, and the same God who has given you the assurance of your salvation as a result of his, his Holy Spirit living within you. And for that, we should be grateful. We should sing praises to the Lord. So maybe that's what you need to do this morning. Instead of focusing so much on your problems, maybe take time, set, set that aside for a while and focus instead on praising God, praising Him for His faithfulness in the past, praising Him for His action in your life right now, and praising Him for the assurances of what He has promised to bring to you in the immediate and in distant future. That, of course, being our ultimately our eternal salvation, our glorification where we receive our new bodies. Well, friends, it's the first of the week. I pray it started well for you. And I pray that you've got your focus squarely on what it is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Knowing that all other things will be added if we'll seek the kingdom first. And if we find rest and comfort in him. And when we're focused on his kingdom and we're filled with his spirit, we're then compelled to go out and live sent. <laughs>